Hello and welcome back to the Programming in Minox Learning Series. In this class, we're going to look at table functions. These are functions initiated by a button trigger that allow us to manipulate entire tables of information. The primary functions that you're going to use are represented on these five buttons here. Now, most often, table functions will be actuated using a manual trigger which is to say the user clicks a clickable space, a button, or a clickable formula. It is, however, possible to utilize these table functions in any of the triggers. Table triggers, field triggers, or application level triggers. Let's take a look at our common table functions, starting with the open table function. When we click the button, we're going to see a specific table opened, and it's going to open in the view that was last accessed when this table was viewed on screen. So we can see here in our button definition that we have the open table function, and the single parameter in double quotes is the exact name of the table. Notice that we have PRODUCT in all caps. This corresponds to this table right here that is named PRODUCT in all caps. If the exact case and spelling here does not correspond to the exact case and spelling here, nothing will happen when you click the button. Now we have another option to open tables, and this option allows us to specify a view. I can select that I want to see the product list, and when I click Open Table, I see the product list. If I select a different view, in this case only active products, then I see a different view. Here are my active only products. The syntax for the second Open Table option is similar to the first in that it still is the Open Table function with the capital T. And the first parameter is still the exact spelling of the name of the table, enclosed in double quotes. But now we have a second parameter, which is the name of the view we wish to open. In this case, I am getting the name of the view I want to open from this option field that we see right here. And the options, product list and active products, in all uppercase correspond to the names of the views for this particular table. Product list and active products. Again, spelling and case sensitivity count for both the name of the table and the name of the view for that table. Moving on, we have the open record function, where our open table functions opened an entire table, the open record function allows us to open up a table and at the same time define a specific record within that table which we want to look at. So we're going to open a record in the product table and we are defining as the sole parameter that we want to see the last record in the selection of all records in the product table. This results in a function that works like that. Here I am in my table functions page. I click open record. I define the name of the table and the record I want to see. And when I click the button, I go to that table and am automatically viewing my requested record. Compare that to the pop-up record function. In the pop-up function, I have specified a specific record in a specific table. I want to go to the product table, and I want to view the record with the ID number of 3. This, again, will take me from where I am, with the click of a button, to a specific record in a specific table. But there is a very important distinction between open record and pop-up record. Here I am in my table functions page. When I click open record, 
not only have I gone to a specific record, but I can see in the background, I've actually moved from the page I was on to the product table, the table I asked to open. Compare that to the pop-up record function. Here, I am going to see the record I request in the table that was requested, but I didn't actually open the table. Here's my page where I was originally still open underneath the record that was popped up in the new screen. So open record opens a record right after it opens a requested table. Pop-up record allows us to view a record in a different table without ever actually opening the table. And finally, there is print table. This function takes two parameters that define the name of the table we wish to print and the name of the view that we want to use as the print layout. You will note that here in our product table, we have a view called product list, all caps with a space between the word product and list. Here in our print table button, we refer in double quotes, exact name of the view that we want to print once we've gotten to this table. So when we click the button, it will take us to the table, open that view, and give us the option to save that view as a report, specifically a PDF, on our computer. Again, these aren't all of the functions that we can use to manipulate tables, but they are the most common table functions that you'll use as you begin building your Ninox applications. In our next class, we're going to look at array functions. I hope to see you there. Visit us at www.nioxis.com. Here, you can learn about different Ninox solutions. You can get tech support through our Ninox Help Desk, which is available seven days a week, or you can schedule private one-on-one -on -one concierge sessions for training, or we can help you build your application. And if you haven't done so already, sign up for our free Ninox Learning Lab. We do this every Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. in the UK, 6 p.m. Central European Time. These free hour-long sessions enable you to learn more about Ninox, features, functions, and solutions. We have open Q&A where you can get answers to all your Ninox questions, and you can meet other members of the global Ninox community. We look forward to seeing you there.